Our discussion is on shear and moment in beams. So let us define a beam. Of course, we have seen what is a beam. And by its definition, a beam is a bar subject to forces or couples that lie in a plane containing the longitudinal of the bar. According to determinacy, a beam may be determinate or indeterminate. So when you talk about statically determinate beam, so those are beam in which the reaction of the supports may be determined by use of the equations of static equilibrium. So meaning to say, when you talk about determinate beam, those are beam wherein you can compute for the unknown reaction uh, on the support using the equations of static uh, equilibrium. So these are example of statically determinate beams. So we have here an illustration wherein these beams are considered to be statically determinate beams. So we have a cantilever beam, we have a simple beam, and an overhanging beam. When you talk about statically indeterminate beams, the number of reactions exerted upon a beam exceed the number of equations in static equilibrium. So the beam is said to be statically indeterminate. So meaning to say, for a statically indeterminate beams, uh, we cannot make use of the static equations for equilibrium. So we cannot make use of the equations in static equilibrium in the computation for reactions on our uh, support so basically that is being considered as statically indeterminate so in order for us to solve the reactions on the beam so the static equations can be supplemented by equations based on elastic deformation on the beam so in our previous discussion we have computed for the deformation uh, for statically indeterminate beams so we were able to use a uh, deformation equations in the computation for the deformation of statically indeterminate beams and they can make be they can be of use in the computation for the reactions of the beam as a supplement to static equations so therefore the degree of the indeterminacy is taken as the difference between the number of reactions to the number of equations in static equilibrium can be applied so basically for to identify the degree of indeterminacy for statically indeterminate beams we have to identify the number of reactions and we have to identify the number of uh, uh, equations for static equilibrium so for example this illustration so we have here an illustration wherein you have this prop beam and if we're going to identify the degree of indeterminacy of this prop beam we have to identify the number of reactions so the number of reactions you have r1 we have our r2 we have our moment so meaning to say we have three reactions for this prop beams. And if you're going to identify the number of equations of static equilibrium, we have two. We only have summation of moment equal to zero and the summation of vertical forces equal to zero. So as mentioned, to identify the degree of indeterminacy, we simply have to subtract our number of equations to the number of reactions. So basically, this would be three minus two and this is equal to 1. So, therefore, this prop beam has, or this prop beam is indeterminate to the first degree. So, that is to identify the degree of determinacy for our indeterminate uh, beam. So, for this one, we have now an illustration for our type of loading. So, the type of, load, of loading so loads can be applied to the beam can may consist of a concentrated load a uniform load a uniformly varying load or an applied couple or moment so if you can see on our figure on our illustration we have now the types of loading that is acting on our beam we have the concentrated load 
we have the uniform load, we have our uniform varying load, and we have an applied couple. So those are types of loading that is acting or being applied on the beam. So for the shear and for the shear and moment diagram, so basically for shear and moment diagram, when you talk about shear and moment diagram, these are uh, analytical tool, analytical tools that is used in conjunction with structural analysis to help perform our structural design by determining the value of shear forces and bending moment at a given point of a certain structural element such as a beam. So basically, this shear and moment, di bending moment diagram, these are a great help in the structural analysis of a certain structure on a certain element of a certain particular structure. Uh, one example of a certain, of an element in a certain structure is a beam. So this shear and moment diagram is basically a help in the structural design, in the structural analysis for a structural design of a certain element of a certain structure. Okay, for the shear and moment diagram, let us consider this beam. So we have here point A and point B, which has a support, and we have a reaction which is R sub 1 and R sub 2. So if we try to, to have the shear and moment diagram, we have to take note that we are going to assume that the beam is be, to be cut at a certain portion. So for example, along the beam. So we're going to assume that the beam should be cut at a certain portion along the length of the beam. So for example, you have this beam and you're going to cut that at a certain then point that is denoted by C. So once you cut that one, this C is, for example, you have this, so we're going to isolate now. So if we're going to isolate our cut section, so we have here our point A, so R sub 1, and of course, this cut section at point C is at a certain distance X from point A. So from the cut section of point C, you have to take note that there is a shear force V. This is, you have the shear force denoted by V and you have a couple that is denoted by M. So you have a couple that is denoted by M. So this, our, this shear force, this shearing force and the couple M is... will hold the left portion of the bar in equilibrium under the action of R sub 1 and W times X. We have to take note that this is our uniform loading, which is uh, denoted by uh, W. So we have to take note that this sharing force and our couple M will hold the left portion of the beam in equilibrium under the action of R sub 1 and our uniform loading, which is W times X. So we have to take note that the couple, this couple M, is called the resisting moment or the moment, and our shear force V is called the resisting shear or the shear. So the sign of V and our M are taken to be positive if they have the senses indicated above. So meaning to say, uh, if we're going to have this direction, they are taken as positive. Okay, you have here some of the properties for important properties for shear and moment diagram. So the area of the shear diagram to the left or to the right of the section is equal to the moment of that section. The slope of the moment diagram at a given point is the shear at that point. The slope of the shear diagram at a given point equals the load at that point. The maximum moment occurs at the point of zero shear. So you have to take note of this. Meaning to say at a point uh, zero shear, 
that is the occurrence of the maximum moment. This is in reference to the property number two, that when the shear, also the slope of the moment diagram is zero, the tangent drawn to the moment diagram is horizontal. When the shear diagram is increasing, the moment diagram is concave upward. When the shear diagram is decreasing, the concave moment diagram is uh, downward. So we have here our sign convention. For our sign convention, so you have here the customary sign convention for shearing force and bending moment are represented by this figure. So this one is positive bending. Then you have your negative bending. So this one is an illustration for positive bending. And this one is an illustration for negative bending. So we're referring to the bending moment diagram. This one is an illustration for positive shear. And this is an illustration for a negative shear. And we are refer referring to the shear diagram. So those are uh, sign convention that we have to take note in our bending moment diagram and in our shear diagram.